Hello everyone, and welcome to the unboxing of Warfighter, the World War II Pacific Combat card game. I've been looking forward to unboxing and playing this game after having watched a review by the Hexy Beast on YouTube. I'll put a link to his video in the comments as he is a great board game reviewer and I recommend him highly. So let's go ahead and check out Warfighter by DVG Games. All right, on the back shows us that this is a World War II Pacific combat game that takes place in the Pacific Theater of Operations. World War II Pacific can be played with one to six players. Each player takes on the role of a soldier selected for a special mission. The game system controls the enemy soldiers. Warfighter does not require any special rules for solid or play. And we here at Tabletop for One really, really like that there are no additional rules for solitaire play. Inside the box comes with a game board. As you can see, I already have the nice neoprene mat. I ordered this off of DVG website and it is high quality. I really like how it feels and um, all the information is clear on the mat. Here is the rule book. The rule book has 51 pages of rules. It is an extensive rule book explaining all the different cards, how to use each card, giving the anatomy of a card, And really, it's a very thorough piece of literature to help you understand the game and how to play. Along with the rule book, they give you this handy keyword and card. It's trifold. Comes with all the common keywords that you're going to find on the cards. And gives a brief explanation of what each keyword means. You're going to keep this by your side as you play. Along with the rule books, we have campaign cards. Each of these campaign cards gives you um, loadouts, starting locations, objectives, special rules, and you're to play them one after another until you finish, and then you score based on how well you do. I'm very much interested in um, using these um, campaigns but I do realize that some of these require expansions and I don't have many expansions yet. Nevertheless I will enjoy these. This one here does not require any expansions so I should be able to use this campaign card. Alright and then we have <laughs> a lot of tokens. So all these tokens here are going to help represent various aspects of the game. As you can see there are different items here like rope and charges, bottles, parachutes. Um, you got your squad numbers here. These ones here, Divinity and Holy Water and the Holy Hand Grenade, refer to um, other expansions. I believe the Undead expansion requires the use of Divinity. Divinity is like a, a magic resource they use to cast spells against the Undead. Here's Soldier Tokens here. On this token sheet and you're going to find other items, fuel, foxhole, bipod deployed, ABC, objective tokens I'm assuming, hardy tokens, hardy refers to um, your ability to withstand weather effects and environmental um, detriments in the emissions, you have mortar shells, actions, 
bandages. Uh, actions as you use them will be flipped over to indicate that they've been used. All right, We've got more soldier numbers here. These are going to help identify which soldiers you have. You're going to place one of these on a card and one on the location to indicate that that's where that soldier is. You have the ammo tokens here, more rockets, grenades, rifle grenades, breach charges, comfort box, more hardy tokens. The ammo tokens, as you can see when you flip them out, um, you got empty cartridges. You'll have to reload. Here's some more tokens. The stars represent experience that you earn. Here's a bunch of grenade tokens, different kinds of grenades, blast grenades, smoke grenades, the timer, and then the experience on the other side you'll see have two experience sides. So as you gain more experience you'll use those sides. And here you have the enemy killed in action tokens to indicate how many enemies on each card you uh, killed, as well as these are the targets. So when an enemy is revealed, he will target one of your squad members and um, that will be represented by the number. These are your suppression markers, which you'll use when you suppress the enemy or the enemy suppresses you. All right, that's it for the tokens. Now this game comes with 390 cards. And I'm going to just give a brief overview of the cards and not go into too much specifics on the individual cards. So let's start with the skill cards. Actually, I apologize. Let's start with the mission cards. So when you play the game, you're going to pick a mission. And the missions will include stuff like this. Uh, enemy charge enemy assault, snap raid, rapid raid, short patrol, and so on. And each of these mission cards will indicate how many resources you have, how much time you have, the objective number, and the loadout adjustment, and any other special uh, rules. Along with the mission card, you're going to pick out an objective card. And... Um, each objective has a special requirement. So in this case here, this, this sweep objective, you're going to get on site, meaning you're going to have a soldier or more there. And you're going to eliminate all hostiles. On this card, it also indicates how many hostiles you're going to encounter. Well, not how many you're going to encounter, but how many resource points worth of hostiles. Um, from what I've seen, the hostiles can range from zero to three resource points. So you can encounter quite a few. And um, so depending on the resource amount for the mission, that's going to tell you how many hostiles you're going to encounter. There's quite a few different objectives here. So that's going to increase your variability in the game. And then we have the location cards. So when you play the game, you're going to have a mission card and then an objective card. And in between, you're going to have to go through several locations. Some of these locations are going to include a native garden, a stream, jungle, heavy jungle. And each of these locations are going to have, once again, hostile deployment. And they're going to have a cost to play. This one is free to play. They might have an environmental role. Uh, you have the role for fever. Uh, this one's also obstructed, which gives additional rules. No vehicles. Of course, it's in the middle of the jungle, so it's going to be hard to have vehicles there. And so on. This also has an entrance cost, and depending on how well your soldier can move, um, this entrance cost can hinder your soldiers. All right. Let's move on to these soldier cards. Comes with a nice big stack of soldier cards. And the soldiers are going to range from non player soldiers, player soldiers, and squad soldiers. Now, player soldiers have 
a higher resource resource point cost uh, but you can customize their equipment as well as they come with equipment and skills already equipped so your player soldier cards are going to be your best soldiers but because of the high resource cost you're not going to be able to have too many of them uh, non-player soldiers cost a little less um, but they come up with um, some equipment already and you're not able to customize that equipment and then the squaddies come with bare minimum equipment and cost a lot less all right so let's check out some of these soldier cards real quick this here is a player soldier card and comes with one experience already free combat experience which allows them to draw cards comes with one hardy for hot he's a hunt he has hunter gung-ho and close combat skills and here is a non-player soldier as indicated by NPS this one comes with an M1903 A4 scoped rifle comes with camouflage equipment comes with gung-ho and focus one hardy and he has a boost to his hand-to-hand -hand combat and then here's the squad member he comes with uh, two grenades and he has basic attacks and actions all right let's move on to the enemies the enemies come in two levels I'm just going to show you a couple of these so as you can see on the back here, it, it tells you which nation they're from. It also tells you if they're elite or frontline. Now this is going to be normal difficulty and higher difficulty. These two are going to be the same cards. They're both holdouts here. But the stats are going to be different based on frontline versus elite. This 4 in the reticle indicates how many enemies at in this group so in this case they both have four the four to three and two to one that you see here you're going to roll for their attacks based on how many they still have how many um, units are still in that group and as you can see the rolls for misses and um, for hitting are um, are um, different between the two levels of difficulties but they have these special rules at the bottom where the elites cause the entrance cost of that location to increase also adds to attack rules as they get hurt so um, this one adds one this one adds two so again the elites are going to be substantially more difficult to fight and encounter as you play. This entire core set comes with many Japanese hostiles so there's going to be some good variability you're not going to know what you're going to get and there are um, even I believe there's a tank in here at some point. Uh, mortar team legendary sniper here's the tank and if I remember correctly vehicles have to be um, hit with explosives don't quote me on that but pretty sure and they have a huge cover amount so they're gonna be difficult to fight you can invade them though for 4 XP and that may be something that you'd want to do all right let's move on to the weapons and just show you a few of these weapons on the back of the card you're going to see United States weapon on these cards here there are more weapons in the pile as well as equipment cards I'll show you in just a moment this one particularly says any nation so if you're playing with other nations you can use this card it's a satchel charge all right this one specifically is used against vehicles and structures 
You also have various rifles, more satchel charges, shotguns, machine guns, machetes, bayonets, scoped rifle. And each of these cards are going to indicate various aspects of the, the weapon. This is a bolt action, meaning you get one shot. And then if you want to shoot again, uh, you have to expend uh, action cards for it. It's got penetration, which reduces the uh, cover of the enemy. And um, at ranges 0, 1, and 2, there are different rules for hitting. As you can see, the closer you are, the harder to hit. So with a scoped rifle, you're going to want to be farther away. Alright, some of these guns require uh, tripods to enable certain abilities. And these cards have a loadout cost, and so when you're customizing some of your your player soldiers, you need to keep in mind the cost of the loadout. Obviously, holding a pistol is going to have a low cost, whereas holding a rifle is going to have a higher cost. Holding a rocket launcher is going to have a much greater cost, or a machine gun, eight loadout with the tripod, five loadout. All right, moving on to equipment cards. This is a breaching charge. All right. Entrenching tool, first aid kit, canteen, camouflage, binoculars. All these cards give you added bonuses or defenses, abilities uh, that you might not, not otherwise have. First aid kit is obviously going to help heal. Um, comes with a number of bandages and so as you use one you expend a bandage to roll for healing. Alright, and let's talk about events. Sometimes you're going to have to draw from an event deck, like this one. Surprise! Immediately perform an attack for a random hostile in play that is in range to attack. The hostile also attacks as normal this turn. So this particular event allows one hostile to um, attack twice, basically. This one here. This one's devastating. Wrong direction. Pay two experience or add plus two to the entrance cost of all locations until the end of the mission. So basically you got yourselves lost and it's going to take you longer to get there. It's a good thing to keep experience on hand to encounter events and other cards like this. This one here, lighten the load. Each player soldier must pay one experience or discard one resource point of gear, then lighten the load. So you might have to lose a grenade or a gun or something like that if you don't pay the experience. Alright. Let's go over the skills. Skills are really interesting. They offer passive and active bonuses depending on the skill. As you can see here, this particular card allows you to roll one extra attack die for your auto attacks. Now, one thing uh, you may want to know, and I didn't really touch on this yet, but some of the cards have a reload number. It says reload 222. So as you roll these dice to attack, let's say you're rolling for auto and it requires you to roll all these dice. If you roll the reload number, you're going to have to spend an action to reload your gun. So the more dice you roll, the higher chance you are of causing a reload. Alright, so you roll the dice. Thank goodness, the last few times I rolled these dice, I had ones. I was ready to burn these dice. But there's a 7, 6, and 5, and depending on the gun you're using and your skills, one of, maybe the 7 and the 6 might have been a hit. This die here is for cover. Again, for 
some of these enemies, they're going to have a cover rating. This one has a cover rating of 3, so the 6 wouldn't make it through on that. So this is a decent roll. Let's hope that continues. Alright, so rolling an extra die with this particular skill may not be a good thing, but it might allow for more hits. Other skills, let's say, um, there's some negative skills. These come already included. It says a soldier may only have this skill if the skill is printed on the soldier card. And this one suffers a suppress each time a soldier is down. That's not good. Gung Ho. Alright, this is um, a nation skill, so it's only for the United States, only for Marines. When you enter a location with a hostile, form and attack without spending an action. Free actions are always good, so that's a good card. This one here, stalking, adds to your shadow rolls. Now you notice here it says add one or the two in brackets. That's called a, an up gun. It's where you can spend an experience to have that better result than the, the base result. So if you wanted to, you could spend an experience to add two to your shadow rolls instead of the one. Alright, there's lots of different skills to choose from. A lot of your player soldiers are already going to come with some of these, both good and negative. Um, and, but this is a great way of customizing your player soldiers and I think a lot of what's going to be fun about this game is building your squad and customizing it ahead of time and seeing how it plays out in the missions ahead. Alright, the last stack of cards are the action deck here. This is a huge deck of cards. Alright, has a bunch of different actions. These are the cards that you're going to be able to play from your hand. Are you going to use them to decrease the entrance cost to a location? You're going to use them to shoot again with a bolt action rifle. Action cards are a currency as well as a tool, so you're going to keep that in mind when, when you um, when you draw cards. So having cards on hand is helpful. Um, depending on your player soldier, uh, their health is going to uh, be their hand size. So it's an interesting interesting mechanic where as you are more wounded you're less <laughs> effective basically because you're gonna have less cards on hand so that um, it's a really good mechanic I like that idea um, anyways so each player soldier is gonna have their own hand of cards so if you have multiple player soldiers they're gonna have different hands and you have to keep that in mind but these cards are great all right, these cards help you um, save actions like this one here. You may perform an attack without spending an action. You may heal one or discard a uh, su suppression counter. Uh, suppression counters are going to cost you an action if you don't um, have something like this to take it away. Location markers. Location markers. As it says, you discard this card and you draw a location from the deck and add it to your hand. Then you're able to choose whether to play that location or not. Um, there's quite a few different cards in here. I'm going to shuffle these all together and draw from them. All soldiers add one to their ranged attack rolls this soldier turn. Combined fire, that's a great card. You'll be able to upgun that to two. It'll be especially useful if you have lots of ranged attack. Um, advance. When, when you are paying an entrance cost, add three to your movement value. So lots of really good cards. Um, overall, I am very impressed with Warfighter, with the, the amount of content you get in the, the box. I love the campaign sheets, I love the quality of the content, the, the card quality itself is really good, although I plan on sleeving all the cards, um, and my wife's probably laughing at me right now, because she says I have a problem with sleeving, 
and I say it's not a problem. It's, it's a good thing. It protects the cards. It's easier to shuffle. Nevertheless, I have not yet played Warfighter. I'm looking forward to playing it, and I will post some additional videos going in more depth on the player soldier cards, some of the equipment, some of the enemies, and um, I will also post some playthroughs. In the meantime, I appreciate any comments on the game. I would also... Um, encourage you to check out uh, Dan Versen Games current Kickstarter for Warfighter World War II in both the North Africa and Mediterranean Pacific, or, uh, Mediterranean Theater of Operations. Um, as a disclaimer, I have not been sponsored for this video. All the content that you've seen in this video I have purchased with my own money. And uh, one last request from everyone, if you have any World War II documentaries, videos on YouTube, on Amazon Prime that you would recommend, I would greatly appreciate them because I have not learned about World War II since my childhood. So I would like to learn more about the Pacific Theater of Operations since I have that game, about the North African and Mediterranean theater as well as the European theater. I'd like to learn a lot about that um, because I plan on playing those games and I'd like to have that in my mind as part of the thematic element to playing this game. Thank you very much for watching the video. This has been Tabletop for One with Daniel.